what's this I hear that you can use a wormhole to travel backwards in time? Does the math check out? Does the Einsteinian physics check out? And does that mean I will just show up a younger version of myself and shake my own hand? Is that what you mean by that? Or do I no longer exist in the time that I left for my younger version of myself to see that? And wasn't there, I, didn't Hawking put forth a time travel prevention conjecture or something? Was, what, what's going on there? So this is all an outgrowth of uh, my phone conversation with Carl Sagan uh, when he was uh, working on the novel for contact where uh, he triggered me to start thinking about wormholes. And then having started to think about wormholes, it became pretty obvious to me rather quickly that if uh, uh, I give my wife, Tara Lee, one mouth of a wormhole, and she carries it at high speed in a rocket ship out into space and then back. And I keep the other worm mouth at home. Uh, and uh, if she, she sees me age by 50 years back on Earth, well, she ages only one year going out and coming back. But if we look through the wormhole at each other, uh, we see each other aging at the same rate. Just imagine... Uh, we hold hands and we look at each other's wristwatches. They're, it's ticking away at the same rate. So through the, wor through the uh, wormhole, we've aged at the same rate. We're the same age. But uh, looking throughout, th outward, through outside the wormhole. Through a normal hole, universe. Uh, uh, she's aged one year and I've aged 50 years. Something weird has happened. The wormhole has become a time machine. If I just go over and go into her mouth, wormhole mouth, and come out, I'll meet my younger self. Okay, now Hawking said, this is, no, we're not going to allow this. There's some conjecture yet to be discovered that'll tell you you can't do that. Well, so, you know, the story, we get there. You're, you're going too fast. I'm going too fast, sorry. So, so I, then I talked to friends at the University of Chicago. Physics, it's crucial to talk to friends. They tell you where you're all wet. They tell you when you've made a mistake. They straighten you out. And they pointed out to me that uh, it might be that when the time machine is turned on, it'll self-destruct, basically, they said. And I said, I don't understand. They said, go do a calculation. So I went and did a calculation. And the issue is, and, and they had guessed, and the, uh, basically, it's, it's oversimplified, but they... Bob Garroch and Robert Wald at Chicago. Uh, anyway, it turns out that uh, at the moment that the, you can first time travel, the, the first thing that go, goes through, it can be vacuum fluctuations of light, say, that, that enter her mouth of the wormhole, come out of my mouth and go back and arrive back at the, her mouth at the very moment they started out. Now you have twice as much at the same place in space and oh. time. So this is a runaway. So it's a runaway. And so they, you now have twice as much, and then it goes around again. Now you have four times as much. It goes around again. So this runaway uh, builds up. The feedback between a microphone and a speaker. Precisely. And it just runs away. It just runs away. And it runs away. And, and this runaway shows up in the quantum mechanical calculation that, that I did. You're bumming me out. Dude. Together with uh, I... Sung Wan Kim, a Korean... Postdoc of mine. Okay, I'm going to be a movie director and say, go, Kip, go home and figure out how to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Give me another, pull another rabbit out yeah, of the hat yeah. here. Uh, well, anyway, we discovered this. Stephen, I think, and Stephen one Hawking. of his, mm -hmm. uh, Stephen Hawking, uh, and a student of his, I think, ha had more or less the same discovery at the same time. Except Stephen probably just did it all in his head because <laughs> mm -hmm. that's the way Stephen is. Anyway, so... Uh, then Stevens and I started corresponding about it by email and talking on the phone about it and so forth. It appeared to me, looking at, at the details of the calculation, that, uh, in fact, the explosion, if I designed the time machine just right, the d details of the explosion, this explosion would not be strong enough to destroy the wormhole. Uh, and Stephen then showed me that I was wrong. And we argued back and forth for a while. 
finally we came to com agree that the explosion becomes strong enough that quantum gravity enters in and then holds the answer tightly in its grip. And so we won't know whether the time machine uh, self-destructs until we understand the laws of quantum gravity. So let me be fun but obscure then, here. But then we come to the Hawking's cosmic censorship conjecture. That's what it's called. Yeah. He, the conjecture that, in fact, uh, in the end, the laws of quantum gravity won't save the day. The wormhole will be destroyed. And any time machine, any advanced civilization makes will be destroyed when they try to turn it on by these vacuum fluctuations. Uh, and thereby, as Hawking says, keeping the universe safe for historians of all species. <laughs> it reminds me of the ultraviolet catastrophe mm -hmm. where you run the calculation. This is going to blow up. How does yes. this even work? Yeah. Yeah. And then out comes the discovery of the quantum, which saves the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And this is, it could be a, a calculation waiting for another branch of physics to open yeah. or, or another progress yeah. in the known branches yeah. of physics to resolve. The LIGO team has, has uh, perfected a technique called quantum precision measurement, which is based on manipulating vacuum fluctuations uh, in order to circumvent the uncertainty principle. And so this business of manipulating vacuum fluctuations is something we do in modern physics. If memory serves, Carl Sagan came up to you and said, for contact, I want to go far distances quickly. How am I going to do it? Can you cook up a wormhole for me? Carl phoned me uh, in, well, back in the 80s. Uh -huh. um, when he's writing the novel, because obviously right, the, novel the novel predated the, novel, the yeah, movie. That's right. And he said that he wanted, uh, that he has written, he'd already written this, the book, the novel. Uh, it was already in page proofs. And he said, I've got this novel. It's in page proof. The publisher's not going to be happy if I change it, but I really need some help to uh, see what the truth is, and then we'll figure out how to deal with this. And uh, he said that I have my heroine traveling through a black hole to get to the Star Vega. And I said, that's... <laughs> Rather dangerous. <laughs> There's a singularity in there. Okay. <laughs> There's a, sing a singularity in there, and you can't get through mm -hmm. to get to, to the Star Vega. So what you actually need is a wormhole. Uh, but there is an issue that wormholes implode. They collapse so quick that nothing can get through. But I'll see if I can figure out how to, <laughs> how to hold a wormhole open just for you, Carl. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> and so... And so I was, go I was going with, with... It's like rent a physicist. <laughs> yeah. It's like whatever your needs yeah. are. So I, so I was getting in a car that, that morning to ride uh, with my uh, former wife to our daughter's graduation up at Santa Cruz. Uh, and so Linda, Linda was, said, I'll drive and you calculate. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. so she drove and I calculated and I fiddled around and then it became fairly obvious Turns out somebody, other, some other physicists figured this out sooner, but uh, that's the usual thing with me. I, I figure it out, and then I, then I go see, did people know this before or not? <laughs> uh, so, so anyway, I figured out that uh, you, if you had what I like to call exotic matter that repels gravitationally, and you put it inside the throat of a wormhole, that can hold the wormhole open. It'll be like pushing it. Yeah, that's right. It basically repels the, the walls, the wormhole, to hold them open. And it turns out that that, that will do it. But you have, to have, uh, 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 you have to have enough exotic matter to hold the wormhole open. And uh, uh, I deduced a formula for, uh, for how much you had to have. And it basically says the following. Uh, if you move through the wormhole... Let the record show he's about to describe... How to make a wormhole. No, okay. no. Only how to hold it open. Only how much exotic matter you have okay, to hold it open. Th that sounds like a recipe to me, but so, go on. So you, you travel through the wormhole as close to the speed of light as you possibly can. Uh, just very, uh, close to the speed of light. And you, uh, you add up all the, 
the energy density all the way through the wormhole of stuff that's in the wormhole. The net has to be negative and then you can hold the wormhole open. So it basically means you've got more negative energy than there than positive energy. Oh, and because we have nothing known as exotic matter. Oh, yes, we do. What? Yeah. And so they... they oh, is, is this in your basement? Is, what? <laughs> what do you mean, oh, what, what, what do you mean, oh yes, we do? What, what, okay, what... What is our exotic matter that would fulfill this purpose? So, so if you should we turn off the camera now? Before, <laughs> are, are the, the, is the government going to show up on your in your driveway? <laughs> okay, go. Well, Men I, in black. I, I learned about this from Yakov Borisovich Zeldovich in Moscow. Zeldovich. Zeldovich was one of the inventors of the Russian hydrogen bomb. Okay. And I learned this from him. All right. Okay. He was really brilliant. I mm -hmm. learned about about vacuum fluctuations. And how important they can be, and what how powerful it can be if you can manipulate them. And uh, so, and so, if you take a box and you remove everything you, that can possibly re, be removed from the box, you're left in the end with tiny fluctuations of everything that cost possibly could have been in the box. Uh, so, electric fields. You have fluctuating electric fields, fluctuating magnetic fields, fluctuating protons, electrons, uh, fluctuating Neil Tyson, the Crass Tyson. Uh, so this, this creates a form of pressure inside the box. Well, so the next there's vanishing pressure and not vanishing energy due to renormalization. Okay. <laughs> now, now that's a nasty, that's a nasty word in physics, but. Uh -huh. The, uh, the, the, uh, well, me we can, you can measure energy by whether it produces gravity or not. And, uh, the, although these fluctuations that are there, it, you can think of them as particles, say particles of light flashing in and out of existence randomly. So why isn't this not the virtual particles that That's, people speak it is. of? It's, so it's virtual particles. It is that. Okay, we, we've spoken about those on our okay, show before. Okay, so you have virtual with, with particles. With Brian Green, in fact. So yeah. you have virtual particles uh, in the vacuum. Popping in and out of existence. It, it, popping in and, out, and, and you can't stop it. You can't prevent it. However, you can take fluctuations from one region and borrow them and put them in another adjacent region for a little while. Or if you put an electrically uh, uh, conducting uh, sheet, say a sheet of, of, of superconducting metal here, then that will suppress the fluctuating electric fields parallel to the metal because they would create an infinite current flowing in that metal. And that would, uh, that, that would wipe out the, the electric field parallel to the metal. And so uh, is that you this, have... Is that an element of the Casimir effect? Yes, that's the Casimir effect. It is, yeah, where you have two parallel that's plates right. evacuated between them. That's right. And there's a point where they actually feel yeah. a whole other force and attracting so, them. And so what that force really is, is uh, in the region between them, uh, the vacuum fluctuations are suppressed. And so you have negative energy in between. And that energy, negative energy is sucking them together. And you have, you have, you, and they can do work on you if you, you're holding on to these plates uh, and they attract each other. You have to put other. energy to resist you put, it. You put energy in as they go, as they go together, they do work on you. The electric, electromagnetic field between two plates in the Casimir effect uh, is exotic. Okay. And so, so you have this in your basement is what you're telling me. Yeah, and, well, <laughs> I don't have it in my basement.